Hey guys, hey. Uh, welcome back to uh, another episode here of this of our, our channel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we haven't done anything in a while, but in fairness, that's kind of we we've kind of adopted a wait and see approach. Yeah, uh, to major see. changes coming. Right, right, and that's kind of what this video is about. Uh, we're gonna we've managed to get a look at just about everything there is in eight already, and uh, we My wanted goodness. to talk. Yeah, we wanted to talk a bit about that with you guys. Uh, I'm not gonna go into you know, full on explore every army details or anything on this. Uh, no. If there's interest in specific things, you know, you can ask us or something. But uh, we will have an eighth game. We will have an eighth edition game up the day of or the day before release. Um, Exciting. So you guys can sort of see how that'll go, and probably another eighth edition game shortly after Afterwards, release. Yeah. Because uh, we're looking at filming two before release, um, or around that time frame. So. Uh, go ahead and start into it. So we kind of have like a list of topics to talk about. So we're just gonna go down the list. So. Pretty much anything that has most things that we've come up with that are definitely very different from seventh edition. Yeah. Um, that we wanted to emphasize here in the video. Correct. So uh, the first thing we have up here is uh, movement. So movement is uh, drastically different. Yeah, it's very variable depending on the uh, unit that you right. are bringing. Um, there are some things, like even with troops, there's some troops that can move only six, and then there's others who... Well, there's some that only move like four or five Four, four, as four well. or five, or some, and then there are others who are the same troop, the same type, but they can move a little. Well, still, yes, yeah, there's still infantry, so it isn't based on the, like, troop, ver you know, infantry versus, like, biker, like it used to be. Now it's, you know, Terminator, for example, moves five inches, mm -hmm. um, whereas if you look at something like a Harlequin Skyweaver, that thing's going to move uh, 18 inches on you, and it's going to get a free advance at six inches. Yeah. So, um... There's also um, one thing key for a Tau is I believe the Strike Teams, they can only move six inches, while Pathfinder specifically can move eight. Yeah, so exactly. So you're kind of like, they're, they're differentiating uh, between, you know, roles that the, you know, units would have. So your basic, you know, standard mainline infantry aren't going to be moving quite as far because they're more heavily armored, whereas, you know, you're more like scout-oriented units or quick travelers, like, they're going to substantially move farther. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, it, the movement is, is very, like, it, it varies pretty wildly. Like, some things yes. can move, like, 18 inches and other things move, like, 4 or 5. Uh, but uh, that's all kind of baked into the to the uh, units and kind of what they prioritize cost-wise. Um, we're talking more about that one here in a bit. Uh, probably one of the biggest changes, though, in this is to vehicles. Um, Most definitely. Vehicles have uh, more wounds. A lot more. And they have uh, more toughness. Well, they have toughness. There's no yeah, more... They have toughness, period. Right. There's no more armor-facing or things like that. So, you know, front armor, side armor, rear armor, and that. That's all gone. Uh, so, you can drive your transports backwards if you want to. It doesn't really matter, honestly, anymore. It's all the um, same. Right. Um, they, uh, so the reason they're driving the transports backwards, I, I say that, I say that as a joke because I saw someone's like, well, I'm just going to drive my transports backwards now so I can, you know, they can disembark normally. You don't have to do that. Um, there's no more, like, entrances or exits to the vehicles. It's like, if it's a transport, you can get out, you can get out on any side. So, okay. um, you can still move your vehicles and whatnot normally. Um, so they could just make holes and like, I don't know, like sure. the ceiling and just pop I, out. The, the logic is the vehicle would rotate for them to get out and then like pivot back to the best position. Without actually that. having to force the issue of any adding movement. Right, that. right. So and that's that, pretty cool. Because especially if you look at some of their FAQs from 7th, like that was getting pretty messy. It was like if any point on the vehicle is moved further, which means you can't pivot, which is, it, it just created a lot of... If you move at this 45 degree angle, you need to use this side facing armor. <laughs> yeah. So, and on top of that, trying to figure out what armor facing could sometimes become possibly mm -hmm. argumentative or stuff like that with, you know, depending yeah. on the people. But no more! Right. No more in the 8th edition. You don't have to worry about that at all. It's right. all toughness. So, as to whether or not that actually ends up being a good thing, it's probably going to depend on the army you have. Um, the vehicles are... But we'll get right. to that. Um, so specifically, I want to just touch a little bit on that. Uh, just as an example, you know, like a Land Raider is going to be 16 wounds for you with a two-up armor save. So they all, they all have armor saves now, too. Um, whereas, you know, something like, uh, let's just say a Dark Eldar Venom is going to be, uh, and the, the Land Raider would be a toughness eight. 
uh, Dark Elder Venom's toughness five and like six wounds. So a, cardboard is still cardboard. Yeah, you can still get one shot by a last cannon uh, in your venoms and stuff like that. Yeah. But generally, the changes make it so that you can't just get killed by a lucky shot. However, the weapons that were, were still good anti vehicle are still, still good anti vehicle. Right. I mean, fusion blasters. Yeah, fusion blasters, melt guns, last cannons, even like crack missiles are actually quite good now too. Mm -hmm. uh, before crack missiles were kind of eh because it'd be hard to get enough, you know, a certain vehicles, especially once you get to like armor value twelve. Not the case anymore. Strength eight is always going to wound on fours. Uh, there's nothing higher than toughness nine, at least that I've seen in the stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, or toughness not nothing higher than toughness eight, yeah. which means if you're at strength eight, you're not you're never rolling less than a four to wound. So, unless there's like some modifier, which happens sometimes. Yeah. So, uh, that's a very interesting uh, change to all this. Sorry, I'm um, speaking a little bit. <laughs> kind of the uh, next topic, while we're on topic of vehicles, is uh, transports. So, transports are across the board more expensive. This ranges from like a 25% increase up to, like in the case of the drop pod. Oh almost, my God, drop pod almost is three times. Insanely expensive. Yeah, drop pod is almost three times. It's going to cost so you like a, about 105 points now, which is, I think it's too much. Um, I I think it will have some limited application. I think people will still maybe have like a single drop pod. There's so many changes to it too that kind of just does right. not help with the extra cost. Yeah, you can't put a dreadnought in it anymore. Like you can only put, yeah, you can not put a dreadnought in it. You can only put certain things in it. Yeah, um, I don't even think you can put terminators in it. Nope. Can you, you well, can't put terminators. terminators didn't usually get put in it unless they're part of Death Watch, which was why you're thinking of it. But yeah, exactly. Now it's strictly uh, basic infantry. Like that's that's it. Um, and also since basic infantry and uh, this thing that costs a hundred and something points is right. So the general use of it is going to be like dropping you, you might have like a single squad that's devoted to like killing a character mm -hmm. um or we're we'll touching on characters later but it's relatively generally hard to actually target a character um the drop pod can allow you to actually get to a position where you can target the character so being able to come in in a position isn't necessarily you know it, it's still useful uh but i don't know if it's as useful as they seem to have priced it because your, your your guys still can't stay in the drop pod they still have to get out yeah. Um, you have to land nine inches, or you have to land more than nine inches, which means it's still a nine inch charge. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I I don't see drop pods being super useful. I think you probably see people maybe have like a single drop pod in their army now, but for those people who have like, you know, like four or five drop pods, you're not going to be too happy with that. Uh, however... Not only that, but with the variable amount of distances via transports, I, I think that... Since right. everything has to be within nine inches, then the point of drop pods is even more it's even diminished. Smaller. Yeah, you could just use something else. Yeah, you could just drive the rhino up there ten inches and be like, yeah, it's roughly the same thing. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't see drop pods being fantastic. Like I said, I, I could see people bringing like one at most two, but that's probably a reach. Um, uh, you know, it, it is what it is. Even the unit, so the, like I said, the drop pod has to lie, land nine inches away. Same thing for the unit getting out. So the the unit that lands and has to get out immediately still has to stay nine inches away That's from like, any enemies. So you yeah. can't even like be, oh, can't it lands, and then I have to place it within three inches of the drop pod so I can get a little closer. No, it doesn't work like that. They've explicitly It lands, that. and then you have to move backwards somewhere. Right, which, again, it doesn't, I don't know. It, it, it's a very weird setup with that. Um, but by and large, overall, transports have definitely benefited. Uh, a rhino is roughly doubled in cost. In fact, almost exactly doubled. Well, considering the uh, the wounds now, yeah, the toughness, yeah. it's buffed up quite right. a bit. No, the, the rhino is... it's People are going to want rhinos. Let's just go with that. It's ten wounds and you think toughness seven, so... Mm -hmm. I, I need to review the devilfish, but the devilfish is it's a little bit more... It is almost twice the cost, and we'll go into a little more detail why, Right. but it's That's... also increased in toughness, and it's also increased in health. Right. Almost I'm still going to use one. <laughs> right. No, no, I, I think in general your transports are, are better off for it, Yeah. but yeah, you're, you're going to be paying for that. Uh, almost across the board, they're double in toughness. The exceptions to that are going to be your Harlequin transports. Cardboard. Yeah, and your Dark Elvar transports. Um, so much cardboard. 
Right. And they're 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 not that they went up, but not nearly as much. Like they went up maybe like ten to twenty percent. So it kind of reflects the because they're still guns. so fragile that they aren't going to charge you for those things exploding because they're they're going to do it. <laughs> they don't. They don't, they don't explode. <laughs> well, either. they're gonna, they're going to melt. <laughs> okay. Fair so enough. they're they're still going to die. They're going to turn to ashes. Mm. So, uh, moving along here, we're talking about uh, so, yeah. Why we're on that? <laughs> we're actually transitioning this intelligently. Really. really? So cost priorities. Um, oh, there we go. Yeah. So we're kind of talking about that. We're going to transition to that. Um, so generally what you're going to find is most of your main line or scout type infantry have more or less stayed the same. Uh, there isn't really much of a modification. In, in a lot of cases, they got cheaper, actually. Pathfinders are cheap. Yeah. They're so cheap. Uh, basically, like, for example, your, if you play Dark Elder, your Cabalite Warriors are a point cheaper now. Um, if you play... Yeah, the Pathfinders went down uh, another five points per. Yes. Uh, which is pretty nuts. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's just... Most of your mainline or scout-type infantry are cheaper, and mm -hmm. the idea being you're going to fill more of those. Uh, that said, like, it, like we said before, the transports, uh, those are definitely more expensive. Yes. Um, your vehicles in general are just more expensive because of the toughness your, and uh, wounds. Your elites, uh, same thing here. Well, uh, that one depends. Expensive. Depends like, on the elite. Depends on the elite well, and depends on the. Depends on the factions. Depends on the elite and depends on the things that come with said elite. Yeah, um, so, I will say that uh, most that my elites, uh, my being Tau, um, are a bit more expensive mm, because they come with Except for stealth suits. Stealth suits are the same price and better. Stealth suits are they, that's true, but crisis suits more expensive. Yeah, uh, stealth suits. Skill, more expensive. Stealth suits are better than they used to be, like by a good margin, better than they used mm -hmm. to be. Yeah, so uh, dogs. <laughs> um, so yeah, stealth suits. Uh, they are they're the, almost exactly the same price. Uh, they have more wounds now. They have better toughness. Mm -hmm. um, so they have two wounds and toughness four now, I think? Yes. Yeah, so your stealth suits, for any of you Tau fans, uh, you're going to like them. They're good. I uh, like them. I like them. They now, make up for that's the extra a, cost and the crisis suits. Uh, assault moves are gone. That's including your bikes and stuff, yeah. as well as your suits. Uh, but, yeah, uh, elites kind of run the gamut. Some of them are... Uh, it's, it's, it's hard to, to qualify where elites fall. Uh, Incubi got cheaper. Um, but crisis suits got substantially more expensive. Mm -hmm. um, Same with heavy support. Crisis bikes. suits almost pro almost doubled in cost. The, oh my goodness, I had to. But they got one more wound, yeah. and you know. But um, so heavy support also is a little more pricey right. as well. Um, your tank, like I said, just your vehicles in general and your heavy support stuff almost universally have been costed higher. Mm -hmm. um, the biggest differential here is going to be your fast attack slots. Yes. Um, with Exceptions of like jump infantry type things, so like scourges or you know anything that was kind of jump, but specifically your like biker type units, like those are more expensive across the board, except notably harlequins. Uh, Harlequin bikes actually got cheaper because they were overcosted to begin with. True. So now they're you can essentially bring two bikes for ninety points as opposed to two bikes for a hundred points. Mm -hmm. So. So it seems that and they, they got another things. they got an extra wound too. So. Yeah. So a few things. <laughs> essentially, it feels like, and this is in my opinion, depending on faction, it feels like things that originally seemed a little too cheap for what they do have gone up. Yeah. Have gone up, and then things that seemed a little too expensive for what they do have gone down. Right. Um, it just it feels a little bit more natural cost wise, even though as Tau player I complain. Yeah. No, I mean, we we we're, we're actually just before this making lists and uh, and eight then it you can still get quite a bit. Uh, oh so, yes. So, but your armies are generally going to keep their sort of feel um, in terms of like if you're a you know if you ha if you're an army that could feel a lot, you're still going to be able to feel a lot. Um, if you're an army that was small and elite force, you're going to still be small. We uh, just for a comparison, we made a Death Watch army. Um, Oof. And basically, deployment for Death Watch at 1500 points was three models, mm -hmm. um, which does mean you always get to go first. That's a change. 
But, yeah, you will always go first as Death Watch, basically. But you have a stupid amount of firepower there. Yeah. Um, so for um, for Tal to give kind of like that medium there, uh, you could bring in a lot of small things as well as several big things. Um, I still have a decent amount of troops there. Uh, mm -hmm. Two strike team squads, uh, a larger breacher squad, uh, two pathfinder squads actually got bigger. Plus, I can still bring a devil fish. And crisis suits, and stealth suits, and, and a ghost kill. all the yeah. scary, all the scary right. things. The only thing I could not fit in was another vehicle, piranha, but whatever. Right. I still, it still allowed me to, to bring things that are very scary with a high enough number to make it count. Right. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, kind of across the board, like I said, it, they, they tried to sort of maintain the feel, you know, identity of your army, so to speak, but, you know, they, they've tried to sort of adjust the cost a little bit. Uh, there's some things that are too expensive for what they do now. Um, drop pod. Drop pod. Uh, Dark Eldar Reavers, for example. I mean, on the plus side for Dark Eldar, you can actually choose your combat drug now, uh, but you can only choose it once per squad until you've used them all. Uh, but uh, Reavers, like, they have literally doubled in cost, and they have not doubled in effectiveness. <laughs> so I don't That's see Reavers good. getting used more than a sparingly is like objective grabbers or something because mm -hmm. they are still super fast those are like the 18 inch bikes but uh i think we'll get into more like kind of the who's benefited the most and who has yeah, not benefited yeah. at all oh, yeah towards a little later uh so we're talking uh, a little bit more uh change of, uh let's see general army adjustments we were kind of talking about yeah, that we, were, we actually cleanly uh yeah moved into that yep yeah. so basically your Marines are not going to feel as spammy as they were. Uh, you could still certainly field quite a few tactical squads if you wanted, um, but you're not really rewarded for that. Um, other benefits with, uh, we talked about as far as like uh, that tacticals or things like Cabal Light Warriors, like mm -hmm. basically squads that might have like mixed weapon capabilities, um, you're actually encouraged to sort of keep them together now as opposed to combat squatting. Uh, every model can shoot. I mean, there's obviously downsides because if you keep them all together, it means the opponent just has to target one squad. But um, every model can actually shoot at a different target, basically, if you want to. So, you know, your guy with the plasma cannon doesn't have to shoot at what the guys with the bolt guns are shooting at. Yeah. And vice versa. So, um, there's definitely, you know, advantages and as there's disadvantages, but... Um, you know. I think for that, for Tau specifically, that is a mad... I, for, I think it's a good advantage. I like it. Right. Um, it depends on the squad as to how big of a deal. But I, yes. I agree. It depends on the squad. Uh, you do have to declare. You can't be like, I'm going to shoot a gun. All right, they're not dead. I'm going to shoot another gun. No. You have to actually declare everything that's going to shoot at the target, and then you can shoot, you know, everything else will shoot at something else. And you, so you can't, like, go back and lie. I crudded and die. I rolled bad. I want to shoot at that. No. Can't do that. Uh, they kind of, you know, it's, it's in the rules, cut you off at the source already <laughs> on, on kind of yeah. gaming the system like that. So uh, they were smart about that. Makes it nice. Um, but, yeah, I mean, overall, I think just generally your your tactical, like, type units have benefited. Uh, Cabal Light Warriors, tactical squads, mm -hmm. things like that. Uh, next topic we have is uh, changes to flyers. So flyers, if you guys all remember, you'd have to shoot on sixes. Uh, mm -hmm. On that note, uh, while well, I'm thinking about heavy weapons, those have switched now too. Uh, you no longer have to hit on sixes if you move. Uh, they now just hit on uh, plus one, you know, mi minus, minus one, one skill. Plus skill. So yeah. and if you hit on threes, you hit on fours. If you hit on fives, you hit on sixes. But Which is still a lot better. That's uh, awesome. Uh, That's so awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I have so, so many heavy weapons. <laughs> Uh, sir, uh, that applies to vehicles too, unless it specifies otherwise, which only the biggest vehicles do. So like the Land Raider, for example, gets to ignore the penalties for heavy weapons. Um, you know, so where it makes sense. Uh, other changes were the twin, why, well, uh, it's just so many stuff. Uh, twin linked weapons are no longer re-rolling failed to hits, they are just double the shots. Now they're just called twin weapons, so like they're say twin assault cannon, and it'll say heavy. Yeah. I think it'll say like heavy 12. Mm -hmm. So you get 12 shots from that assault cannon, which is better than rerolling misses. That is a lot better, I personally. Um, I, I like essentially, that. I mean, it's definitely better than rerolling misses. I mean, essentially, you're getting to roll more yeah. shots. Right. I mean, you never, even if you missed all six, you'd never roll more than six more. Mm -hmm. So 
in no situation is it worse. <laughs> at, at worst, it's equal, but it's not likely to be equal. It's usually, almost always going to be better. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, si similar topic of the flyers, you no longer are hitting them on sixes. Um, now, only if they have a certain special rule. So like things like a flying hive tyrant doesn't have this rule. Uh, so you're able to hit him at normal ballistic skill. Um, but something like a jet might will have like supersonic rule, and that means you have to subtract one from your ballistic skill when shooting at it. Um, similarly, jink as a universal rule seems to be gone, although we haven't got a full look at the rules book yet. Mm -hmm. We just kind of had a snippet of it. Yeah, we'll need to review it to see. But it, right. it appears that jink is no, no longer a plus. Right. Uh, but... You know, certain vehicles will still have, like, if you advanced, uh, it gets to, uh, then your opponent has to subtract one to hit, I mm -hmm. think. Um, or things like the uh, Venom has a permanent minus one to hit. Same for all the Harlequin vehicles. Yeah. Um, so, I yeah. guess it protects cardboard a little more. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's kind of, the, the changes to flyers are going to definitely make them much more susceptible to being killed. That said, yeah. they have relatively normal vehicle stats now, too. Like, they don't have, like, four or five wounds or something. Like, you're talking, I think the Corvus has 12 wounds. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, your, your flyers are hardy vehicles. Essentially, so. if, you, if your flyers are vehicles, then they benefit from the same in They're case basically a bus of vehicles. Fast tanks, yeah. basically, and, and you're, you're paid for it. They're still monsters, monstrous creatures, or... The commander who right. could become a flyer and they not get like the buff of point, the buff of uh, wounds, right? And but they, just the buff of movement. Yeah, they get a big buff to movement. Like the commander can twenty inches from and advance. He can advance and feet. fire too, so he can possibly go forty inches and fire, mm -hmm. which is crazy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sorry, dogs again. Uh, so uh, that more or less covers flyers. They're basically just super fast tanks. Um, they're going to lack the firepower and survivability of something like, you know, a Land Raider. But, um, you know, again, that comes back to what we said with their costing priorities. They're, they're definitely costing priorities are based on uh, mobility. The more mobile exactly. you are, the more expensive you're going to be. Yes. Um, within reason. If you're mobile and fragile, like Dark Eldar or Harlequins, not as pricey. Not so but much, if you're a Crisis but, Suit or if you're a Commander in a Cold Star Suit, it. The cost will reflect yeah, on that. Yeah, exactly. So, if you're, yeah, I said Reavers, they got price increased big time, uh, just as an example of that. And they, most of that's for mobility. It's certainly not from their deadliness. <laughs> uh, uh, so we're going to move on to uh, changes to the assault phase. So, oh, this is interesting. How much have, have people have prayed and hoped yeah. for better assault? Um. So Games Workshop, at least if you kind of listen to what they say, they seem to have been saying, oh yeah, Assault Phase is going to be so much better. Uh, you know, and you get there, your opponent's not going to be happy. And Depends on your opponent. It depends on your opponent, and eh, I don't think it's that much better, or if at all, compared to 7th. In fact, it's probably worse um, for the Assaulting Unit. That said... Um, I mean, the big advantage that comes out of this isn't for the type of armies that I play. Um, Arlene doesn't really play any assault-based armies currently. No. Um, but it doesn't really help Harlequins or Dark Eldar. Um, basically, if you charge, you get to attack first. Um, some exceptions. But if you charge and you get attack first, that means units that have generally low initiative will possibly get to attack. In addition, you can actually charge no matter what weapon you fire. So... You can charge if you shoot a heavy weapon or a rapid, rapid fire weapon, assault weapons. The difference in that is, yeah. The difference in that is now, uh, heavy weapons lose a ballistic skill if they move. Um, assault weapons can advance and shoot at minus one, and rapid fire weapons are, uh, um, they get basically double shots at half range. Mm -hmm. And there, there's different types of rapid fire. Like there'd be rapid fire two, rapid fire three. I think a hurricane bolter is rapid fire six. So. Uh, basically, it means you get six shots, and then at 12 inch range, you would get 12 shots from it. So that's pretty nuts. Um, but back to the assault stuff. Uh, 
now you can literally walk out of combat. Yes. Um, there are penalties to it, but you get to ignore those penalties depending on the unit. A unit that has the fly keyword. Um, Crisis suits. Well, any jump pack unit or jet pack unit now has fly to. Um, suits. Right. So they can leave combat and they get to ignore the penalty, which used to be if you leave combat, you can't shoot. Um, there is quite a few units that get to ignore this. Um, on top of that, it also hurts assault armies in terms of part of the issue with assault armies was just getting across the table and getting into combat. Once you got into combat, um, your unit was usually better that assault than your opponents, which meant, you know, if you didn't kill them all in one turn, the safest place you could possibly be was still in combat. Um, now your opponent can literally walk out of the combat, and then even if that unit can't shoot, their other units can now shoot at your assault squad. Um, this is extraordinarily terrifying against town. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, I, I don't, I mean, un until we get some chances to play some games, I'm... I'm not super enthusiastic about assault units. Um, it's it doesn't look like 8th is going to be the one to put those back on the map. That doesn't mean that Assault Memories won't work. Specifically, Orcs and Tyranids look like they will be pretty good in Melee. Yes. Those have, they have a lot of improvements there. We've actually been looking over uh, your, Nids for a bit. Right. Your Horde-type armies have nice ways to, mod, to mitigate their leadership issues. Um, so that makes them actually quite good for Melee Heavy, because you just can't kill them all, basically. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the idea. And those are probably going to be your best melee armies now. So your orcs are going to be nice again. And Tyranids, I'm as, like I said, we're... We'll see. We're estimating here. We haven't yet played. but We have hopes. Looking at the, the indexes, um, that uh, looks to be correct. Um, whereas your more specialized assault units, things like Harlequins, um, I think they're, this will actually still be a good addition for Harlequins. Whether or not it will be enough to you know, necessarily put them uh, able to solo every, you know, to be their own army again, uh, I don't know, but... But the improvements to the Harlequins are nice. was not just assault either. It was right. a lot over the... It was yeah. all Harlequins got some nice got buffs. Better. We'll talk about that in a bit, um, but Harlequins got some nice buffs. Uh, but yeah, so like I said, you can, you can walk out of melee, um, whoever gets to charge goes first. Uh, there's some exceptions to that based on the whole command point thing. You can spend points to mess with the, you know, order. Um, in, in the event units didn't charge, players alternate picking, like, a squad to fight, basically. So, um, essentially initiative no longer exists, so now it does It's treated like that. Um, <sighs> let's see, what are we on now? Changes, oh, okay, segue's nice. Um, end of morale test now, so it's kind of the end of, uh, at the end of everything now, instead of at the end of every phase, uh, morale is now only at the end of the, the turn, and it affects both players. Mm -hmm. um, you essentially roll one die, and you add the number of models lost, not wounds, models lost, to the die. And if it equal, or if it exceeds the leadership, you lose the number of models that it exceeds the leadership by. Um, so... It doesn't matter if your model has three wounds. Um, if you failed that leadership, you still lose a three-wound model. That's now, you do get to choose what model you lose. So if one of them only has a single wound and it's a multi-wound model, you'd be like, that, that's the guy that's run. Yeah. <laughs> um, however, that also might be the guy who you know might have a weapon you really want, so mm -hmm. it's hard to say. Um, but yeah, morale test is uh, pretty brutal uh, now comparatively uh, in that you can just straight up lose models. Uh, that would be extremely scary for your horde-based armies, but almost all of them have ways to mitigate, including guard. Um, guard can never lose more than a single model as long as they have a commissar in the area. So, uh, orcs have leadership based on the number of models, and Tyranids have synapse, which makes them fearless. So you don't have to take yeah. or make some auto pass morale checks. So now, if they're not in synapse. It's going to hurt for Tyranids, because their leadership sucks. It's terrible. So you you got to keep Synapse up for Tyranids. But if you do, you're definitely rewarded. Um, I think that more or less covers morale. Morale test, I think. Uh, so brings us to uh, uh, characters. Uh, this char is interesting. Right. 
Uh, so characters are very different. Before, you could sort of merge them as squads to sort of hide them so they couldn't get shot. Um, not the case. Not the case now. Characters are literally independent. They just they, they move completely on their own. They have different stats. Um, what prevents them from generally dying is as long as they have nine wounds or less, uh, they cannot be targeted uh, unless you're within 12 inches. If you're within 12 inches, you can shoot a character. Um, if you're more than 12, uh, then you have to pretend the character doesn't exist unless you have a sniper type weapon. Um, Which most, only a few armies have. Right. Uh, most of those are, you know, they, they all have a special rule that'll say can target characters. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of the sniper thing now. But um, some of those weapons that used to be able, that used to act as a sniper weapon no longer do. Uh, of note, Death Watch Stalker bolt guns, they are no longer, you can't target a character. Um, Iron Rifle cannot target a character. Right, the, the Pathfinder Zion Rifle can't do it anymore. Um, instead, now it's just a really high-strength weapon. Um, but, Boom. yeah, that's the big benefit to characters. Generally, they kind of have, like, a little aura around them that'll do, you know, some different thing. Like, as an example, like a Watchmaster for Death Watch, uh, any units within six inches, they get to uh, basically reroll all failed to hits. Um... For Harlequins, uh, they now have HQs, obviously, because you got to have HQs now. Uh, Shadow Seer is an HQ, and uh, one of her buffs is within six inches of her, your opponent has to subtract one from their wound roll. So if they were going to wound you on threes, they got to wound you on fours now. Mm. Um, it's pretty good. Right. So, uh, and characters almost universally, again, have way more health. Yes. Um, They're a lot more uh, harder to kill. Yeah, like a Shadow Seer has, I can't remember, five or six wounds. Uh, Commander for Tau has six. Yep, six wounds. Um, Shadow Sun, I think, has six wounds? Or? Five or six, I can't remember. Yeah, yeah, most of them have five or six, basically, is, mm -hmm. is what most of your characters are. And there are uh, ways to mitigate it to that. You could add drones or um, other units uh, that can your, work as other Your players. command squads, basically. So what yeah. used to sort of effectively act as command squads... Those are how you get your lookout sirs now, or if you're Tau, drones can just do it naturally. Drones, crisis bodyguard suits, I think. Yeah, crisis bodyguards, or if you're Shadow Sun, stealth suits. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, for like other armies, um, your Celestians, if for sisters, your uh, um, your Slith for Dark Eldar, um, uh, command squads for your Marines, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So basically, most. Uh, hive, hive, or tyrant guard for uh, hive tyrants, specifically hive tyrants. Mm -hmm. uh, mostly because hive tyrants can't actually hide because they're ten wounds, so you can always target a hive tyrant. That said, the tyrant guard have three wounds apiece, so I mean, basically, if, if you have one squad of tyrant guard, you're shooting at a nineteen wound model. <laughs> that's uh, that that's gonna take some doing. <laughs> You're not really encouraged on that one, um, so you know that mo most of the, most armies have some way to to deal with it. Um, apothecaries and things like the Hospitaller for our, uh, sisters; those are now mm. their own characters, and they, they do better stuff now too. Um, like a basically, this is also true for like a guardsman with a med kit. Um, you essentially get to try to heal anything within six inches of you. You roll a die, and like on a four plus, they gain a wound. If they're all one, you know, if there's nothing injured or they're all one wound models, you actually get to return a model to the arm to the to the unit, which is really cool. Yeah. Um. So. Yeah, I, I your your apothecaries and your you know healer type guys, your your gift definitely gonna be happy with them. Yeah, you're gonna want them. Um, they're not that expensive either. Like I think the hospitaler is like. 45, which nice. is a steal, and the med kit for guard is 15. So, so useful and cheap. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, on that note, uh, why we're talking about characters, challenges aren't a thing anymore. Um, and basically, every squad that can have something to the effect gets free sergeants. Um, you don't have to yeah. like, pay for them. Like, Chef's V, Chef right. they're all They're all cheap. free now. You can just say, this this is my sergeant. For Death Watch, it's like, that's my sergeant. Now this unit has nine leadership. You know, it's you'll need because leadership is a deal. A yeah. Deal. Well, if, if anything, like, 
nine or higher is doing really well now. Yeah. Um, most units got a subtraction to their leadership, mm -hmm. um, almost across the board, with exceptions of like Necrons, uh, Death Watch, because they're the vets, um, and Harlequins for the most part. Although I think Harlequins lost one too. Um, yeah, so basically, unless they're basically something that's known for being super hard to scare off, then yeah. Um, I said there's no challenges, free sergeants. Um, there's something I missed that I want to talk about, I can't remember now. Uh, so we're just kind of going to the catch all now. Oh, yeah, can choose your own losses. Um, before, you know how losses would happen to be like whatever's closest, so that almost always made your like flamers, or it also made it hard to justify the cost of certain, you know, upgrades. Um, now you get to choose what model dies. So it doesn't necessarily have to come from the front. So if you're using an assault-based army, you might kill some of those models at the back. Yeah. <laughs> it also means you can sort of put some of your more iconic models that should be leading the charge at the front, like you. you Without know, worrying about them dying. Right. Right. So you know you can have your uh, troop master out front. Well, maybe not troop master because he's a character now. But uh, you know. Oh, you, oh, he's a character too. Yeah. You, you can have your sergeant out front, basically swinging his sword. Out in front of himself. Your superior, your sister yeah, superior. Yeah. You, you can have the characters that should. If you have a heavy boulder who's going up front, you can <laughs> use him. Yeah. So you get to choose your own losses. So basically, you know, again, this helps things like tactical squads or, you know, mm -hmm. anything else that would have, or like Kabbalah squads that might have a single special weapon or sisters or, you know, any, any squad that would have a single special weapon or Celsius. heavy weapons. Um, you can now take them as the final casualty. Yeah. Um, this also this also has some other odd effects with like things like Death Watch, where you know you can actually like pick and choose which you lose, as opposed to just like oh, I hope this works in terms of my positioning. So um, yeah, choosing your own losses is a pretty big deal. It definitely helps you justify getting you know paying that extra fifteen points for that plasma gun or uh, what have you, or blaster or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, Let's see, pistol weapons, I will say, uh, another change, uh, almost universally pistol weapons are cheaper. Yeah. Uh, plasma pistol is not 15 anymore, it's 7, it never should have been 15, so they, they recognize that finally. Um, <clears throat> let's see, oh, uh, pistol rifles are cheaper, they're 11 now. Really? Uh, it depends on the, no, yours are 11, because yeah. yours are worse. I think normal plasmas are like 12, they're still cheaper, but they're, <clears throat> uh, I think they're 13 or something, I don't know. Um, so, uh, otherwise of note, units, when you're buying them, uh, when you're looking at your models thing, anyone familiar with crisis suits, that's basically how everything's treated now. You buy a model for a set price, and then anything they're carrying costs you extra. Some exceptions. Things like bolt guns, bolt pistols, chain swords. Pulse rifles, pulse guns. Yeah, lines. your basic mainline weapons are generally free. Um, some exceptions to that, but generally they're free. Yeah. Uh, and, you know. So, so that means that whenever it comes to um, listing out your army and pricing out your army, yeah. um, you, whenever you see like they come included with this and that, you're going to need to not only look at the units, but also look at the cost of this or that. Yeah. Um, they, like, it's no longer just free. They may come with it, but they also come with that extra cost on top of it. Yeah, like a good example of that would be something like a Harlequin Skyweaver. It'll say 35 points for the Skyweaver, right? Um, but a Skyweaver has a Shuriken Cannon on it, and the Shuriken Cannon is 10 points, which means that Skyweaver is actually 45. So you have to actually do that. Uh, characters generally, it, it says under the option, like uh, when you're on the points cost page, like if it includes war gear, if it says it includes it, then you don't have to worry about it. Um, most of your named characters will have included, mm -hmm. you know, war gear. Um, some of the more specialty characters won't necessarily include war gear, but like their war gear be zero points. So, yeah, like Watchmaster is a good example of that. He has like two different things, and both of them say zero. So you're like, so he's just the base cost. Yeah. But because he's not a named character, he's not included under that list. So yeah. Drones actually include their war gear as well. Yep, drones get oh, their war gear for free, which is yeah. Um, but yeah, the. Generally speaking, that's kind of the method that they've prescribed to, sort of the crisis suit method, where you mm -hmm. pick and choose. Um, oh yeah, uh, back to the pistols topic. Pistols can now actually shoot uh, 
if you're in combat, you can still shoot them. Uh, you still have to target the unit you're in combat with, and it's only on your shooting phase. So that's kind of the one reasoning you might not run away from combat if you can't run and shoot, is you might be counting on your pistols to help save you or something. Yeah. Or if you're like Marines or something, which has bolt pistol and still strength and toughness four, they might be like, ah, we got this. <laughs> but, um, so we'll go and talk a little bit now on some winners and losers in this and why we're here we're talking some about armies mm -hmm. kind of some specifics uh so we're starting with uh necrons i think overall i think necrons um are a winner in this one um but not a big one uh but it, it, i think they are going to be a winner in this one uh now they're you're, you're gonna have to change your play style a little bit though the <clears throat> Uh, reanimation protocol is completely different now. Instead of just every time you lose a model, you roll die to see if they actually die or not. Uh, it is now at the start of each of your turns, any models that have been killed, you get to roll for. And this continues. So if you had a 20 count, you know, squad of warriors and five of them are dead, and on your start of your turn, you know, you roll, you, you get three of them back. Uh, I don't, you know, you, you draw five dice and you get two, five, or six to so see you get three, or three of five or six to so see you get three of them back. Um, you know, and then on your next turn, by the time your next turn is around, like six more have died, so you now are at nine, you get to still roll nine dice to try to bring them Jeez. back. So they keep getting chances to come back, whereas so reanimation they, previously, yeah. reanimation previously was make it or not. Um, now they get to keep trying to come back and put themselves together. Robot zombies! <laughs> yeah. Um, you can stop that by just eliminating the unit. Once the unit is dead, they can't come back. So that discourages, you, you know, it makes reanimation far better on larger squads. So it's definitely going to encourage Necrons to bring larger squads. The blobs. Yeah. Um, their general gun has become AP1, or AP, okay, so AP is very different. Now it'll say like AP minus one, minus two, minus three. Yeah. I mean, touch on that at all. Um, so instead of before, where it's like, let's just say you had AP3, um, you would ignore, you know, anything with Marine equivalent or better, or, you know, or worse armor, and they would get no save. Uh, but Terminators, you know, for example, the two up save, they don't care that you're AP3. You didn't affect them at all they still get two up saves um, it's very different now um, now the AP value is at minus one minus two minus three and what that's referring to is you subtract that from your opponent's save so terminators with two up armor if someone shoots them with an AP minus one gun they now have a three up save uh, similarly if someone shoots them with an AP minus three gun you know they go up to a five up save, save which they have five up pinpoints, so that's the same thing but it, it becomes a lot harder to Things die quicker, I guess, mm -hmm. is kind of the idea. Um, Especially considering how much buff and wounds that happens. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's probably a good idea. And their uh, Terminators, for example, have multiple wounds now. They're two wounds apiece. Um, but, yeah, so that, that's kind of the way. Uh, you can also improve your armor save uh, by being in cover. A one is still always a fail, but let's say you're technically one-up cover and someone's shooting a minus one gun, well, you're still going to get whatever your original save was, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so cover improves your save by plus one. Yeah. So it improves your armor save by one. Uh, not all save, just armor. <clears throat> Going back to uh, other winners. Yeah, yeah. other Necrons. other winners. Uh, oh, right, uh, as far as Necrons, they also, their quantum shielding is pretty good now. Um, now, anytime they take damage, you roll the die against the amount of damage taken, and if you roll less than the amount of damage taken, it's ignored. Which is crazy. That means you don't want to roll They're high still against so Necron hard vehicles. To kill. If so, let's just say you know. Usually, if you're using a last cannon and you roll a six on your damage table, you'd be thrilled. You're like, hell yeah, I got six damage. Now the Necron, you know, but if you're shooting Necrons and you roll a six, as long as they roll a five or less, they don't take any damage. So yeah, they kind of like make you kill them by death from a thousand bites, basically. That's but, so unfair. Yeah. So. Uh, we're, we're seeing. I don't know if that's unfair yet, but yeah, it's. I, I would say that's a, a really big deal for for Necrons there. Mm -hmm. um, they definitely came out uh, in general. I think ahead of where they were. Yeah. Um, at least maybe not. I don't know ahead of where they were. They're in a good spot, but you know what I mean. They they they're definitely not a loser in this edition. Uh, Harlequins are going to come out of this as a big winner. 
Uh, that said, they needed to be a big winner, um, but I don't know if it's going to be enough to push them all the way. It'll be close. Uh, if they need more, it's not much. Uh, granted, we haven't got a chance to play with them yet, but that'll be very we'll soon. Uh, but I'm pretty psyched about them. They got four up in bowl now across the board, so now no matter what, they're getting a 50-50 shot to survive it. Pretty good. Um, their weapons are no longer based on their strength, and there's a good use for everything. Uh, caresses, kiss, uh, the kisses are probably a loser in this edition, I will say for them, but they're too expensive. Uh, mm -hmm. They're 14 points now. <laughs> they That's don't, pricey. For what they do now, they don't deserve to be 14 points. Um, but you get to make multiple attacks with kiss as opposed to a single kiss attack. Um, instant death is no longer your thing either, so you can't double out strength and kill multiple wound models. Uh, similarly, Kiss of Death doesn't auto-kill you. Although if you do roll six to wound, it's six damage. So it that hurts. <laughs> it, it'll hurt, but yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, the Harlequins, like I said, you don't have that Furious Charge anymore. But it doesn't really matter because everything but their basic weapon that they're given uh, is going to be a certain strength. Uh, so... Two of the weapons are strength four, that's the kiss and the um, embrace, I think. I, know, I think it's the embrace. Um, our strength four, the kiss is AP minus one and D3 damage unless you roll a six to wound. Um, and the caress is, I believe, the strength five AP minus two. So strength five is nice. That and is nice. the. Minus two AP, yeah. that's good. And the um, embrace is strength four, AP minus one, but I think it's D3 damage as well. Mm -hmm. So there's a good reason to sort of bring all three of the weapons now. Uh, but they also, you know, it helps you negate your low strength that you would have as being Harlequins. Yeah. Um, other advantages to them is they still have, they have four base attacks, which is a lot, a, no other model. I throughout almost, unless you're talking about like the big monstrous creatures and shit, um, they don't have anywhere near, like, your basic infantry models, I, I haven't seen anything with four attacks other than the Harlequins. So, you there got your go. attacks. You got your boatloads of dice. Um, <clears throat> so, Harlequins came out a winner. All their vehicles now as well, including their bikes, your opponent has to subtract one when they're shooting at them. So, if they normally hit them on threes, they hit them on fours. If you're poor Tau and you normally hit them on fours, well, now you hit them on fives. fives. So they have that Cheers. built in, and they still have their four up in Voln save. So, you know, they've, they've got some nice tricks up their sleeve. Um, I would say Glaives are nerfed, um, but their Star Bolas are better. They're not one shot anymore. I would be surprised. However, their bikes are now really seem to be their anti vehicle go to weapon mm -hmm. because. Uh, haywire, their Haywire cannons are massive winners in this. They get D3 shots, and Haywire nor used to wound on you know two or up. Now it wounds on a four or higher, or no, on a four or higher it does because it has still has a strength. So you would roll the die. Let's let's just say it's strength four. So you'd probably be wounding vehicles on a five um, most of the time, um, and it's only vehicles. Uh, but if you roll a 4 or higher, you get a mortal wound. And if you roll a 6, you get D3 mortal wounds. Uh, mortal wounds get to ignore all saves. And nice. So they just straight up do their damage. Uh, so what the Harlequin bite gets D3, you know, shots with each Haywire Blaster. And they're not that expensive. Um, yeah, they, they can definitely reduce a vehicle pretty quick. Uh, so I think hey, they're... Specifically, their bikes are definitely set up to be their anti-vehicle now, and they're pretty scary. Um, Harlequin vehicles, in addition, generally are actually good in melee. Like, they hit on threes, and like... <laughs> so, they're actually... You can actually melee with vehicles now. Uh, right, we didn't talk about that. <laughs> Shit. Uh, There's so much that has changed. I won't be able to cover it. Yeah, yeah. Vehicles can charge. Um, yeah, vehicles can charge. They can, can actually, charge. you know, get you into combat. Absorb your absorb Overwatch for you, etc. So we will say that vehicles is also a winner. Yeah, vehicles are definitely a winner. Um, all right, transports. Let me go back. The okay. So to get out of a transport, it has to be at the start of the movement phase. So the transport can no longer drive up and drop you off. Um, so you have to be in that position. In the right. Place. So you, right. So basically, what that means is your transport has to get you there and then survive a turn, mm -hmm. and then yeah. 
Uh, transports that die, every model in there has to roll. For every model you roll a die, and for each one, a model dies, basically. Um, there's also certain vehicles that will explode, not all. Um, and those will do D3 mortal wounds to things around them if you roll a six to make them explode. So they don't always explode. Um, <clears throat> let's see, the other big winners. Um, I would say your orcs are probably going to be a big winner in this edition. And I think Tyranids are too. Um, just by nature of the way the morale works now mm -hmm. and the fact that you get to basically ignore it as those armies. Yeah. Um, that helps a lot. Right. I don't necessarily know if shooting versions of the orcs, at least, will necessarily be big winners, but I do but think... melee... Right. I, I do certainly good. think your melee-oriented orcs are going to be winners. Um, and Tyranids, just overall, I think are going to come out reasonably well. Um... Marines, I think they're, they're going to be fine. Uh, they're more or less still the general, overall strong, but, you know, nothing crazy. Their grav guns got weakened, but they got buffed in other areas, so Marines are fine. Um, um, Tau are fine, personally. I think Tau are fine. I think um, the... We'll see. I'm, I mean, my only concern is Tau is that some of the, the lack of being able to assault move might hurt them more than... It might, but we could also walk away and shoot. Correct. Which so, is kind of um, helps. Right. And, the, and, the, and those are still... The things that could still do that are the things that I wanted to use the assault with. Um, troops... Generally, troops can walk away from combat, too, which will help. And if you're the kind of Tau player who has troops in the back line, they can back up from combat and free up everyone else to shoot at the remaining squad. Yeah. So I think that there is still a benefit there. Do I think that Tau are, um, are going to still be the powerhouse army that no one that has in well, the I think, I think they're still be in a good spot. They'll still be in a decent spot, but... I don't know if they're going to be, like, completely invincible anymore. So that kind of brings us to the ones that kind of in the middle to possibly loss, you know, or kind of losers in this. Yeah. Um, Astra Militarum kind of is right on that line. I think they're going to be fine, but um, they didn't come out a major winner, but they're certainly not a loser. What about the um, Sisters of Battle? My sisters. Um, I, I don't know. I can't decide which sisters. I, I think certain things help them, but... The issue is a lot of things helped all the armies, and sisters I think will be okay. I mean, they're certainly not going to be any worse, but as to whether or not they got that helping hand up that they really probably they needed, needed, I don't, I don't think don't, they did. No, I don't think um, so either. Astro Militarum did get helping hands up in terms of with the commissars being able to ignore the leadership that is now an issue for everyone else. Their orders are also really good. So, as far as your guardsmen and like your general infantry set for the Astro Militarum, they are winners in this. Your vehicles, not so much, because Astro Militarum love to throw out, like, giant blast radiuses and hit, like, eight models at a time. And that's no and longer the case. That's not a thing anymore. Now you do, like, D6 hits. So you roll a hit, you roll one die, and you're like, well, I only hit one model. Or maybe you hit six, but, you know, if you had that big blast to direct hit, it might have gotten you, like, eight to ten if it was yeah. a little harsh blast. So... I mean, those, in, in fairness, that kind of spreads across all the armies, but no one's hurt more by that than Astro Militarum. Okay. Um, vehicle heavy lists, as far as the ones that were shooting, like, the big pie plates, they're losers. Um, however, the, you know, things like Punisher cannons and things like that, you're going to like them, because you're going to be putting out, because you remember Twin Link is giving you double shots, so you're going to be putting out 20 shots with that Punisher cannon, and that is scary. That is scary. <laughs> Um, penitent engines did quite well, I think. Yeah, sister, that's true. Sister, the penitent engines were buffed for sisters, and that's actually a really good buff. And the hospitaler was buffed. Yes. So they got help. It just, I don't, uh, until it, until we can get some games and try it, I don't feel comfortable saying the sisters are in a good spot. Like, I think they're okay, but I don't know if they got quite enough. Speaking of what may not be in such a good spot, how do you feel about your Dark Eldar? Yeah, so Dark Eldar, um... Again, we have a very mixed bag. We have uh, some... 
uh, relatively problematic adjustments. Um, here's what I wanted to see for Dark Elder. I wanted to see some of their lesser used units, things like your witches. witches. I wanted a reason to put together my Hellions, and I do, but not for the reason I wanted. Um, I wanted to see, you know, uh, I wanted to be, get, be encouraged to field, like, you know, more uh, Incubi, or be encouraged to field, um, you know, stuff more than just, like, Venoms, Raiders, Cabalites. Your homunculus, your or Ravagers. Yeah. Well, the and homunculus, or the Talos and Rab or, uh, Chronos. Chronos were in an okay spot. But, you know, I wanted reasons to bring Grotesques. I wanted reasons to bring racks. I wanted reasons to bring Mandrakes. I wanted... And of all that, I got a reason to bring Mandrakes. Uh, Mandrakes are improved. Uh, I don't know if enough, but they're usable now, or certainly, for their points cost. I, I had actually... I think they're quite usable. Um, so I think if you have Mandrakes, you'd be happy. Um, Talos, if you have Talos and Kronos, you will not be as happy. Um, they, they're they kind of a loser in this because of uh, the monstrous creature change, which basically gave them AP2 you know, weapons, so they get to ignore everything. Um, now their weapons are basically AP minus one. So, yeah, they're not really ignoring armor of any type. Uh, they're still not very fast. They're only like 8-inch movement. Uh, which is of okay speed, but whenever they're they're only toughness seven and they have what is it seven wounds or no toughness Maybe. six? I don't know. Either way, they aren't that scary, um, and they've got to get to you. And I don't. Know, I, it's not that they're going to be useless, but they they definitely took a hit. Um, I'm not sure how often I'll use them. The Kronos is marginally better, but it's also more expensive, so I don't know if it's enough more. It might be too expensive compared to the Talos to be worth it. Um, I will say a couple good things for the Dark Elder. Uh, you can pick your combat drugs now, but you can, if you, or roll. You can pick a roll, but if you pick it, then you have to continue to pick all your combat drugs, and you can't select the same combat drug more than once unless you've already selected all the drugs. Mm -hmm. So... While that's nice if you only have a couple of units, if you've got several, you're probably still going to want to roll. Um, power from Pain is different now. Starting on turn one, you have a six-up Feel No Pain, or what used to be Feel No Pain. So you, basically, if you take a wound, you get a roll die, mm -hmm. and on a six-up, they come back. Um, <clears throat> see, uh, damage doesn't overflow, though. So there's no difference between getting killed by a bolt gun you know, having like a Kabbalite getting killed by a bolt gun versus a Kabbalite mm -hmm. being killed by a last cannon. He's dead, or he's really, really dead. Um, he can still possibly come back, you know, with a six of them. Um, other adjustments for Power From Pain. Uh, starting on turn four, they get to completely ignore morale as well. So that's, that's nice. nice. Um, turn three, they get to reroll charge distances, I think. Oh, good. And turn... I, that might be turn five, but I think that was turn... No, that's turn three. Uh, turn two is they get to reroll failed hits. Or is that... Uh, this is the one I'm not sure. It's charge versus this. Uh, anyways, one's on turn two, one's turn three. I think it's turn two you get to reroll uh, failed melee hits of one. And then on turn five, your opponent across the board loses their leadership by one. So that's pretty scary, but it's only on turn five. Mm -hmm. So you've got to get there. But if... And you have to be within six inches, I think, of a you know unit with power from pain. So then they get minus one leadership. Um, so that's not too bad. Um, but like I said, what I wanted versus what I got, um, Reavers were kicked in the balls. Yeah. Um, you might still manage to field a squad of them, but I don't think they're they way to too expensive in my opinion like you're better off going Hellions which is why I said I kind of got a reason to field Hellions but not for the reason I wanted I didn't want to see the Reavers kicked in the ball so the Hellions could possibly do something but that's what happened the Hellions off. weren't really they're ever so slightly buffed because now they have like AP minus one weapons normally so you know they're okay now we actually forgot a big winner hmm. Assassins oh yeah oh my god yes the Assassins are Assassins massive, are massive winners, winners. Um, yeah, I almost forgot that. Yeah, but uh, I'll get to this. Uh, the, yeah, the Dark Eldar. Um, so generally what you ended up with was more of the same. So we had kind of as Dark Eldar, we had a relatively narrow range of what's good and viable. And you still have we a still have a narrow, narrow if not more narrow range of what's, what's good, good and viable. viable. So I'm not thrilled. I 
I can, I, I certainly think I can still win, um, you know, with Dark Elder. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, other notable hits, uh, they're Splinter Cannon, which used to be six shots on vehicles, um, you know, at 36 inch range, is now Rapid Fire 36, th uh, Rapid Fire 3, 36 inch range. Which means you only get those six shots per cannon at 18 inches, which is not really where you want to be when you're in cardboard. Mm -hmm. um, but the one notable thing is this is going to definitely, <clears throat> this, this will be the addition of blasters. <laughs> um, Trueborn and blasters. Cabal Lights with Blasters and Dark Lances, they are big winners in this, and you're going wow. gonna to like your blasters. Uh, and that's, that, that's the reason I think Dark Elder will still be fine. But again, it's just kind of more of the same as opposed to a chance to fix some of their problem units. Hi. Scourges are amazing, but not for the reason they were. Um, so now when you enter into combat, you can literally, the end of any movement phase, including the first turn, place within nine inches. Um, so Scourges get to do that, but Haywire Blasters are now far weaker. Now they're strength four, AP minus one, and they still have to roll four to get a guaranteed, you know, wound with the mortal wound. So you want to know what you want to use Scourges with? Splinter Cannons, because now they're Rapid Fire three, which means you can land your Scourges 18 inches away and shoot 27 shots into your opponent. Which is terrifying! Yeah. That is extremely 27 terrifying. Splinter Cannon shots, uh, because you couldn't really use Splinter Cannons very well as Scourges before, because they were Salvo, which means you had to land 12 inches away. which And you'd only get half the shots. So now, with them being Rapid Fire, oh my god, Scourges and Splinter Cannons. Like, trust, that, that is going to be a major thing now. You don't have um, Scourges in your, in your list, do you? Yeah, I did. Oh, so you're gonna get to deal with 27 splinter oh, shots. Uh, poison is still wounds on fours, um, except on vehicles. It does wound vehicles on sixes. So there you go. <laughs> I know a lot of people. I think we're nervous about how what was gonna go on with poison weapons with everything going toughness. Like there were there be destroying vehicles. Or, everything has keywords now. Anything that's keyword vehicles will get wounded on sixes instead. However, your big shit like your wraith knights, wraith guard. Your, 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 your toughness eight like non vehicles, poison don't care. <laughs> poison so, will get them. It will see yeah. through the armor and it will destroy whatever inside. Yeah. And that's the important fleshy part. Right. So you know, you can bring that nice eight wound riptide, but uh, good luck making all those saves against those scourges dropping in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, like I said, dark elder they're gonna be fine, but. Ah, uh, it's not what I wanted. I, I really did want more chance, you know, more ways to make them viable instead of just like use more, the same yeah, way, but more, more blasters and splinter cannons. And blasters are better than ever now because um, we didn't even cover that. Uh, how wounding works um, now to wound, you have to actually double out toughness, uh, or to wound on twos, you have to double out toughness with strength. Similarly, to have to wound on sixes, you have to double out strength with toughness. So, in other words, the strength 3 weapon would wound a toughness 6 model on a 6, and as well as anything past that. So, you know, it doesn't matter if you're toughness 7 or 8, that strength 3 weapon still wounds you on 6s. Okay. Um, similarly, though, strength 8 is a super good place to be, because that means you will wound everything on 4s or less. Uh, and that's where blasters are. And blasters are multiple wounds, which means screw your Terminators, <laughs> or, or anything else with multiple wounds. Oh, you got Crisis Suits? They're still dead in one shot. So Terrifying. And they, they, they're exactly the same price. They're still 15 points, and the squad of a Cabal Light squad went down by five. So you can build a Cabal Light squad with a blaster for five less points. <laughs> so we'll see how the game will go. Yeah. Um, like I said, they're, they're still Dark Elder are fine. It's just not what I wanted to see. Um, now, the biggest winner, in our opinion, bar none, are the Imperial Assassins. Um, Ooh, they're, they're not vindicator. What? So, basically, Assassins across the board was, were cut by about 50 to 60 points. Right? Um, and they were not cut in effectiveness. No. So, I would be surprised not to see almost every Imperial army bringing at least one Assassin, possibly two. Um, depending on what you're dealing with. 
Uh, the Vindicare is phenomenal now. He's also the most expensive, but understandably, because he can target characters and his weapon does D3 damage, and Pretty he much ignores really their cover, rounder, ignores think. their cover, ignores their armor, and wounds on twos. So, yeah. Any character will. Well, it doesn't ignore them. It's minus. It's AP minus three. But, but that's still pretty good. That, that's, Any yeah. character yeah. is kind of neat in front of the Vindicar. Right. Um, so Vindicar is a big winner um, because of the nature of the way characters are now. Um, How are um, what are some of the other ones? <clears throat> the Calexus is fan freaking tastic if you're playing against anyone with psychers. Calexus will be the psychers um, doomed. All assassins can now deep strike, basically. So they can basically land within nine inches. And the Calexus has a nice special rule of its weapon is normally strength five AP four? AP minus four, I think. And it's three shots uh, or four shots. Three or four shots. Uh, if you're within 18 inches of an enemy psyker, you get to double the number of shots. So the Psyker buffs the Assassin. Right, right. So basically, like, you don't actually want to kill the Psyker. You want to use him as, as ammo, essentially. <laughs> so the Calexus, and you still have to hit him on sixes. He, he treats everyone, you know, if you're shooting at him, you're treated as though your weapon skill six. So that's hitting He still has the Pariah, sixes. I think, is it called? Uh, no, it's called something else. It's like Animus, I think, or something like that. Um, in any case, yeah, you have to hit him on sixes, both of ranged and melee. And he's four up in Voln, and he's got, I think, six wounds now. So he's, yeah. And he's still character. So, you know, you have to be within 12 inches to be able to target him. <laughs> so Imperial Armies, if you're going against yeah. anyone with a Psyker, take the Calexus. If you're going against anyone Cal else, uh, the care would be good. So the Calidus is interesting. Uh, she can now, normally, like I said, it's nine inches. The Calidus gets to deploy uh, a D6 plus three inches away. So if you roll a one, she can deploy four inches away from, you know, wherever she wants to be, mm -hmm. which means you get to charge. The turn you come in, you can still charge. So that's like a guaranteed charge on a character. Good luck beating the Calidus one-on-one -on -one with your character, because it's probably not going to happen. How's the Eversaur? Uh, Eversaur is the beat stick monster he used to be. Um, he can only appear nine inches away, but he still gets his three dice to charge. So, more often than not, he's going to make that nine inch charge. Uh, and if he, di if he dies in melee, uh, he has that explosive thing and he does mortal wounds to everything that's in melee with him. That's enemy. It specifies enemy, so, melee so friends aren't hurt by it. I guess he have anti eversor armor. <laughs> it, just comes, it just comes with every Imperial Guard. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, That's yeah. the one thing the Emperor gave the The Eversaur is, is quite scary in terms... Of, so they kind of serve different purposes. The Eversaur is there to just annihilate a squad. The Vindicare is there to kill characters. The, the Calexus is there to deal with psychers. And the, um, you know, the, the Calidus is there for... I want that character really dead. <laughs> uh, like, she's almost always going to die afterwards. But, you know, she has a decent chance to actually make it in there. Uh, she also has some other niceties if you bring her on uh, t the entire turn one if your opponent wants to use a command point they have to roll the die or you have to roll the die if you roll a four their command fails unless they spend another command point which you're looking at generally depending on what you bring anywhere from four to like six command points at 1500 points mm -hmm. so having to throw an extra point out there at something that could hurt yeah uh, so that's a nice thing for her but, yeah, no, the Assassins are all big winners. Uh, they're cheap, far cheaper than they used to be, and you're going to get results with them. Like, it won't be that hard to get your points back from a Nevisaur or a Vindicare. Or, like, <laughs> oh, the Vindicare, maybe, but you got if you manage to kill a character, he gets his points. Yeah. Uh, Calexus is a little harder because he's more specialized, but... I think the Calexus gets his points back almost every time. Every as time. long as they're an enemy Psyker. Yeah. Like, he will always get his points because he can just target the Psyker if he wants to and get his points back. <laughs> Um, other notable winners, uh, Grayfax from Inquisition. She is, she's good now, uh, and she's cheaper than she was, and she's better than she was. Thank goodness uh, for that. Let's see, uh, Cotiez is still a beast. Um, Celestine? Celestine is still a beast. So, yeah, most, basically anything that was introduced in the whole Gathering Storm is still good. Uh, and they improved the ones that worked. So, you know. The, the ones that were sort of questionable are still good. Uh, Inari, 
work the same way they did. Um, uh. They basically you lose any buffs. All oh, right. Uh, other universal rule for uh, basically all Harlequins: you can advance and charge. Normally, you can't advance and charge. Uh, the reason I bring that up is Inari. Uh, if you bring Harlequins before, they never lost anything. Now they lose the ability to, to advance and charge. Uh, so basically, they you know whatever rules that your army had, they will lose, mm -hmm. um, and whatever, but they gain that you know. Speaking of which, you never uh, really mentioned fight. Eldar overall. How are the normal Eldar? Uh, so are they the loser category or middle or? I would put them in the loser category if I had to be honest. I don't think they're bad. But they definitely lost a lot. Um, well, or gained. It depends how you look at it. Uh, if you're a fan of things like Banshees, Striking Scorpions, you know, your Aspect Warriors, you're going to be happy. Um, in terms of power level, they definitely lost. But I think you're going to have a much more fun thematic army to play with than bikers. I don't think anyone would like just throwing bikers. Unless you did. And sorry. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> but, you know... If, if your entire game is about bikers and putting farseers on bikes and warlocks on bikes, then you're not going to be as thrilled. Um, but if you if you like the concept of actually using your aspect warriors, I think you're going to be happy. Uh, they're, you're, and they're they're going to be viable. It's just yeah. Um, wraith knights, wraith lords, those are still pretty good. Um, your wraith guard might have suffered a little bit. Um, but, yeah, no, overall, I think the Eldar are going to be okay. It's just... They haven't they're, they're got so, the same benefits as a lot of other armies. Well, it's, it's more like they're just so different from the way they were, it's hard to necessarily predict where they're going to be. Um, the Eldar will probably be one of the factions that have changed the most. Um, they're trying to seem like they're pushing them back towards their identity of aspect warriors and less about being a biker gang. So, <laughs> you know. The most high class societal <laughs> biker gang ever seen. Right. Which doesn't really fit with the Eldar. So, uh. <laughs> Their graffiti is like murals. Like Leonardo da Vinci murals. Yeah, there you go. They're like, ah, take that! <laughs> Classy as hell. <laughs> as the Inferno to be even snobbier. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I, I, I mean, I think. From the way I would like to play Eldar, I think they're a winner, but, I mean, certainly in terms of power level, I don't think, you know, they're definitely on the losing side, but I'm not sure that's bad. Sort of like Tau in that aspect, um, in terms of power level, you're on the losing side, but I think it's not necessarily bad, because it means you get to feel more of your more fun stuff. So, it really depends how you look at it. You know, you can, if your glass is half full type person, then you're not going to be upset. If your glass is half empty person, well... You sorry. know, sorry, uh, you're gonna have to adapt, but yeah. I, that doesn't mean you can't adapt. There's, you certainly have the tools and ability to do so. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I think that more or less covers yeah, I think so. uh, everything we had to talk about. Uh, I mean, like I said, we all the information is out there. You guys can find it on your own. Um, I don't want to post stuff and have Games Workshop be like. Arr! Take down the video. Beat us with a stick. Yeah, there you go. I, I get it. Just, no, they, they won't beat us with a stick. They'll beat us with a mountain of like subpoenas and litigation and things we can't possibly afford. Right, right. Uh, and I, I would rather I, I, I'd rather not take a punch in the wallet. So <laughs> I like this house. Yeah. Um. So all that information is out there. Um, we're more than happy if you guys have questions to answer stuff in yes. the comments. Within reason, uh, I don't want to <laughs> like be posting like data sheet, like all the data sheets for any armies no, or something. But you know, if you have a specific you, question, but... like a specific model or a specific data sheet or something, or you know, something like that, we'll be happy to right. help. We're, we're happy to share and help you out. But um, I just don't want to stuff on Games Workshop's toes. We've been like, here's everything. Uh, all of them is out, are out there. You can find all the information yourself. Um, if you if you kind of know the right right places to look, uh, again I don't want to point people though to where because I don't want this video to be taken down or anything. But in <laughs> case, uh, please feel free to do the research um, to take a look. Consider you know what things have changed. You know mm -hmm. if you're happy with the army as as it was in seventh edition and then changed so much in eighth edition you're not sure of it, then it could be a chance to reconsider a change if not or to adapt as we mentioned before. So. 
Just no. Certainly, video? if you're worried about something and you're not sure where to look, uh, you can you can definitely ask us questions, and we're gonna try to help alleviate the fears. Um, I don't think there's any army. I we've I've kind of read over pretty much all the you know indexes, and I don't think there's any army that I would say is SOL. Now, granted, we haven't exactly got a chance to play I games. We never talked but, about chaos. We never even mentioned oh, chaos. Jesus, we did. Well, in fairness, we don't play chaos. Um, it's like the one we don't play Elder either. Yeah. Screw you, chaos. Well, I I'm sort of play Elder. I just don't play. True, I don't play Craft World. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the. Uh, well, last thing before I, I, I will say chaos. I think is actually in, in a in a decent spot. Um, specifically, uh, their uh, Thousand Suns side is amazing. Um, it's much more reasonably costed. The, the Rubric Marines are cheaper. Um, in general, I think Marine, the Chaos Space Marines will actually play more like Chaos Space Marines than Cultists. Uh, <laughs> you can still certainly field Cultists, but I think you actually will want to field your Marines. Okay, marines um, I think they're I think they're in a better spot. I do. Um, at least in a more thematic spot. Uh, their their demon engines and stuff are really scary. Uh, I, I'll say that. Like, yeah, if you're fan, if you're a fan of your demon engines, you're gonna be happy. Uh, All right. So, so I'd say cool. they're overall winners. Okay, good. So excellent. Specifically for like I said, demon engines and it's chaos space marines and this, yeah, and like your, your specific types of marines um, are are definitely solid, but. Like I said, uh, you know, if you guys are afraid or, you know, or you know, like, oh, no, this, what about this unit? You, you mentioned this was bad, but what about, you know, something like that. Like I said, you can definitely leave his comments, forget to him, and try to alleviate some of your fears. I don't, like I said, I don't see anything that, you know, as much as one can tell from just looking at data sheets uh, that I think, is, in, I don't see in point, you know, in point values, I don't see any army that I'm going to be like, oh, yeah, that army's dead in the water. Yeah. Um, you know, that doesn't mean it may not require some play adjustment from you. So, like, for example, if you're someone who used to field lots of Talos and Chronos for Dark Eldar or lots of Reavers, you're going to have to adapt. Mm -hmm. um, but, or, you know, Bikers for Eldar or, you know, whatever it is. Like, it doesn't mean you want to adapt, but I, I generally see, you know, a way for most armies to fight. Um, I will say certain ones um, I'm not sure about. Uh, like Death Watch, I can't tell yet how they're going to be. I have to get them on the table because uh, you're still fighting very, very <laughs> small units. However, they have yeah. benefited from certain things like Land Raiders and Very Corvus small and, units you know. with, a, with enormous firepower. Right. So they've certainly benefited from certain things. And, and can shoot at multiple different things now. So. Right, right, right. And that's the big thing for Death Watch is the fact that you can shoot at multiple targets. Um, First turn, awesome. End game early. First turn, not awesome. End game early. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're probably looking at a short game with Deadwatch no matter what. Uh, but that's not that different than 7th. So, yeah, true. Uh, you know, I guess we've had some exceptions to that. But, uh, yeah, like I said, feel free to leave us comments, ask us questions. Um, like I said, don't, just, don't be like, can I have the entire Marine Codex? Be like, no, no. I can't do that. Uh, I don't want to be sued. But... But we can definitely ask questions yeah, about specific yeah. marine we, we, we uh, can, yeah, units and right. some factions. Yeah, like if you're worried about Imperial Fist or uh, on that note, why we're here, uh, chapter tactics aren't currently a thing. Uh, that includes your marine, your chaos marines. I know we just put, got that Trader Legion book and all. Uh, there are no chapter tactics. There uh, are no detachments. No uh, formations. No, no formations. Right. Hunter Cadre is out. Right. Um, the the, the Kyrian out. Yeah. All so, that is out. Oh uh, yeah. There there are no more formations and no more chapter tactics. Almost forgot that. Uh, more than likely, that stuff will probably see it come back when the codexes actually come back. Um, current rumor mill has, depending on how you believe, either Tyranids uh, and Orcs being some of the first two codexes, or Marines being or Marines and Chaos being some of the first two. So. Take your pick, uh, but that's just current rumor mill. Uh, I've seen for both arguments, but uh, yeah, I think that's gonna do it. Uh, look forward to uh, keep an eye on the channel. Uh, like I said, the day before or roughly around, uh, you know, the seventeenth, probably sixteenth ish. You will First we're game? post we're posting an eighth edition game for you, and you'll probably get a second eighth edition game not very far behind, like within. 
four or five days probably. Yeah. So. so stay tuned and if you like this video and all of our other videos, please like and subscribe so you can hear more and keep up to date with us. Yeah, yeah. And like I said, uh, we're sorry for this video or, or for our channel being silent for a bit. Like I said, we've kind of been watching 8th and trying to find ways to find information for you guys, something to talk about. We're also, of course, be talking about all the new fluff that'll be in the rule book. So, if, you know, you're not interested necessarily behind the rule book, but use the free rules, uh, you know, but you still want the story, by all means, you know, watch us. Uh, but yeah, that's gonna more or less wrap it up. Yeah. Like I said, it, we'll be back into a more regular schedule. Correct. It's just what seventh and eighth all in fluctuate, yeah, you know, fluctuation. It kind of felt awkward to continue to do seventh battle reports when it's like three weeks or a month away and. Like I said, uh, yeah, ho we're hopefully we're... We're with bated breath. Yeah, we're just kind of waiting to see what happens and react based on that. But there's enough information, like I said, and for us, we've read all the rules, read all the indexes, so, you know, we, we have all the information now, so we're, we're happy to talk about it, but... Yeah. Um, yeah. So until next time, guys, uh, as always, uh, thank you for watching. Thank you. Take care. Have a good night.